Hi, I'm Marty Glickman speaking for Sports Champions, and I'm talking with the Los Angeles Dodgers sensational left-hander, Sandy Koufax. Sandy, how can you uh, help develop control? And I wish you'd address this reply to some of the younger pitchers in baseball today. Well, Marty, that's a, that's a question that I just can't answer. I don't think anybody can. Uh, the only way that you develop control is to pitch, to throw, and finally you gain confidence. And confidence and control are all boiled into one thing. You can't really separate them. Uh, until you get your control, you don't really have the confidence in it that you should have. And uh, it's hard to have confidence in something that doesn't really work for you. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? That's about what it amounts to. Well, when you throw, when you pitch, do you throw to spots? Yes, uh, every time you throw, pick a target and try and throw the ball there, and eventually maybe you'll be able to do it. If, uh, if you just get out and throw, well, I think you're going to have a control problem all your life. Once you have control and you're blessed with a natural fastball, do you work at developing new pitches for your repertoire? Well, right now I haven't. Uh, I hope in the future to develop new pitches as they're needed. Uh, right now I've stuck pretty much to the fastball and the curve, and work more on trying to get them where I want to than on any new pitches. You feel that you can throw a better fastball now, or were you just as fast when you were just a few years younger? Well, I was probably faster when I was a few years younger, but uh, I don't think it makes any difference how hard you throw it. You have to throw it to good spots. Uh, you have to throw it where you want to. If you keep throwing the ball in the middle of the plate, I think a major league hitter is going to hit it, and I don't care how hard you throw it. Well, what about a youngster playing Little League Baseball, uh, should he try to get that ball over the middle of the plate to begin with? Well, <laughs> that's hard to say. If you can do something else, if you're capable of hitting corners, then do that. But you have to throw strikes. You can't walk a hitter. Sandy, they tell me that you're also a fine fielding pitcher. Are there any points of advice that you would make in order for a young pitcher to improve his fielding? The only thing I can say about fielding is to be ready. Uh, you have to be ready to field the ball. I don't think that any pitcher should try and finish up in a position to field the ball if it's going to hurt his effectiveness as far as his stuff or his control. You have to throw naturally, and you can't change that, but you have to be ready to field the ball at all times. Younger pitchers in baseball seek to strike out every hitter they face. What do you have to say about that? Well, I think possibly this was part of my control problem. Uh, the big difference is when I first started a pitch, I think I may have done that. I think I tried to keep the hitter from hitting the ball. Today, I think I'd rather have the hitter hit the ball, hit my pitch, but hit it at the shortstop on one or two hops or pop it up. And I think this is one of the things that enters into a control problem, is trying to keep the hitter from hitting the ball. I've heard many pitchers say you want the hitter to hit your pitch. Just what is your pitch? That's, uh, it's a different pitch every time with every different hitter but it's the pitch that you feel is in a spot or the pitch, a certain pitch, that you feel he's not expecting. So in other words, to put him at a little bit of a disadvantage. You don't want him to get the best swing he can possibly have at it. And uh, the way you get a hitter to hit your pitch is trying to get ahead of him. Now this puts him a little bit on the defensive instead of being on the offensive at the bat. Do you have a set strategy then before you face any particular hitter? Well, you have some strategy, but it's not set all the time because I think it has to change uh, according to the situation and I think it has to change on the same hitter at times. Uh, the hitter is capable of thinking and he knows what you're doing and if you keep doing the same thing or keep pitching him the same way he's going to begin to look for this pitch and I think he's going to be capable of hitting it. On the topic of getting the hitter to hit the ball that you want him to hit, how do you pitch to a man when you want him to try to hit into a double play? Well, to make a man hit into a double play, you first have to make him hit it on the ground. And depending on what kind of stuff you have, a pitcher with a sinking fastball might throw in the fastball. If your fastball is the kind that rises or maybe runs on the hitter, you'd probably go with your curveball. You try and throw him something that's moving or breaking it down, and it's uh, a little harder for him to hit it into the air than possibly the fastball that's moving up a little bit. And in another situation, how do you prevent a bunt? Well, the hardest pitch to bunt is the high fastball, and it's really impossible to prevent it. You can only make it more difficult. Sometimes uh, you get a man to pop it up by throwing him a high fastball, but you try and uh, throw him fastballs when the bunt is in order and try and keep him up a little bit so it make him tougher for him to handle so that he can't get down such a good bunt. Sandy, when did you start to play baseball? 
Well, I started when I was very young. Uh, I never played in any organized baseball, I guess, until oh, almost in high school. I think I played one or two years of sandlot baseball in New York where I went to school. And uh, I went to high school and played there, and I played in college one year before I signed with the Dodgers. Did you always aspire to be a pitcher? No, I didn't, but I found out I couldn't hit at a very young age, and that was the only place to go. Thank you very much, Sandy Koufax. Thank you very much, Marty.